worship God. Not when only things are good in our lives, but in, even when things are not so good, when things are not in our favor, we want to always continue, no matter what goes on, to give God praise, to bless him. As I said last week, just by Jesus going to the cross uh, and uh, coming, dying, buried, being raised, and then now seated at the right hand of the Father, for me, he's done enough. There's nothing else that he needs to do. Nothing else that uh, I need him to do. And with that understanding, uh, that kind of cancels off and, and cancels out a lot of the um, concerns and things. And of course, I understand in this human experience, uh, we will have concerns and there will always be things uh, that will challenge our faith. But if we stay focused on what he did, I think we're, we're, we'll be able to get through it. Amen. I know that we'll be able to, to get through it, to see God get us through, uh, because he didn't go that far to leave us, amen. I want to talk about today the king revealed, the king revealed, the king revealed. And I want you to open up your Bible, or maybe you have a phone, to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. And this morning, I'm going to talk a little bit more about Jesus but I'm going to talk about him being revealed. Amen. And because of him being revealed, how that um, should uh, release praise, how you should release praise, how you should give God glory. How many can say amen? All right. Chapter one, verse 26 to 32. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledge to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Now the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered, what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you are called and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the what? Say highest. Say highest. Father, let your word be uh, released. Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we ask that the word touch, the word heal, the word set free. But more than anything, Father, let there be a revelation of this word today. What is the revelation? That they would see Jesus in a different light. And because they see him in a different light. Father they will give him the praise he deserves. How many of you say amen? How many have always wanted your praise your worship to go to the next level right? I, I always pray that. The only way that can happen is, I, as is, is when I get a greater revelation of Jesus. Not only in what he does in my life. But also when I read the scriptures, when I read the scriptures, when I get into the word of God, I see something that I've never seen before. And guess what happens? I get a greater, first of all, appreciation. And then second of all, I get a greater revelation. And that just causes my worship to go to that next level. No matter what is going on in my life, right? You know, I was reading this. And uh, as I was studying and preparing for this. Uh, I thought about my son and my daughter-in-law. Uh, they're getting ready to have a son. And, uh, you know, in the day that we're living in now is what they call a gender, gender reveal. How many have ever heard that? All right? Some of you haven't even been to gender reveal parties or whatever. To me, I thought it was just another way to get some, uh, some more gifts. Amen. I, I say, why do we, you know, you have all this. Back in the day, we didn't have all that. We were just happy 
just knowing that she was pregnant and the baby was healthy and the baby was coming. Right now, now they got gender reveal, and right away they're 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 trying to reveal, find out uh, the parents are don't we don't the parents don't want to know, but they'll give it to someone else, and then on a certain day or whatever, uh, uh, they find out the uh, sex of the baby. Well, I was really excited this time around. Not that I wasn't <laughs> for for Sayla and Everly, but because and Leah, but because of uh, my son. Uh, him now having a son and that makes me a grandfather uh, uh, and I would have a grandson and and for me that was joy I, I, st I started tearing up because it may not mean anything to you but to me it means a lot because of my lineage where I've come from and the thing that I would pray and just you know regardless I told God whatever he wants to do but I said Lord it would sure be nice for you to give me a grandson that would carry on this name Suttles. And not so much the name Suttles. It's not, not why I said it, but there's something on the Suttles, his presence. God, what you started with me, you took my life and I had no identity. I had no direction in where I would be and where I was doing, going. But you took my life and you gave me a son. And the thing is that I don't want that lineage. I, I want there to be raised up in this line, a line of subtles. That even after I'm gone, because there will be a day that I will leave this earth. And maybe one day he will come up. And my son will teach him and he will also follow in the ways of the Lord. Right? And that he will also preach and love Jesus. And now this is something I, I, I just started praying. This is something I was praying already years for my grandchildren. And that God will give me, my wife knows, that God would give me a grandson. And so the revealing of that was so powerful to me. The revelation that I'm getting to go. I told him I can't even. I told my daughter-in-law, Lorna, Lorna, just go ahead and tell me. <laughs> I did. I told Lorna, and they knew it. I was serious. I want to know. I believe it's a boy. Sure enough, it's a boy. Woo! It's a boy. It's a boy. I'm not saying God has favored me over you. It's not what I'm saying. I'm trying to make a point here that God also had a gender reveal. And the angel came to Mary. See, now I kind of like the gender reveal deal now. Because I've read it in the scripture and God even had a gender. God wanted to make known or reveal what, was, what he was about to do and sin in the earth. Is anybody in this room with me? God was about to reveal something that would save and deliver and rescue mankind. It wasn't so much the gender, it was the assignment on this child. We're in a season where we're getting ready to celebrate Christmas and it's a lot about this baby, but what you don't understand is not so much about the baby, it was the assignment on the baby. Anybody in this room with me? What a gender reveal. What a revelation that Gabriel the angel had the opportunity to come to Mary and say, listen, God is excited. He's about to come into the earth. He's about to take on flesh and walk among men. See, in our text today, we read Mary being given a gender reveal by the angel Gabriel. Now, if anything you need to remember from what I'm saying today, I want you to remember this. Here is what is significant about these verses. The angel is revealing who Jesus is. Notice that Mary had a specific, was specifically told by the angel, or, or uh, yes, by the angel, what would the name of that baby be? Right? This angel, he is revealing what was prophesied 
Notice what it says in Isaiah 7.14. If you can put that up there. Isaiah 7.14. It reads like this. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin is with child. And she's about to give birth to a son. Notice it doesn't say to a baby, but to a son. And she shall call his name Emmanuel. God is with us. I mean, if there's any type of good news you need to hear, if there's anything you and I need to hear, and yes, I get joy out of hearing the, about a birth of a baby and the gender, but think about it. Not only is God having his son, but he's sending a son who is able to deliver you, set you free, heal you, and rescue you. What a gender revelation. I mean, think about it. If you've had a baby, the excitement. I mean, think about it. when you've had a child, the joy it brings. Isn't that what Jesus should bring to you and I? Well, after we get a revelation of who he is and the purpose in which God sends him, shouldn't there be such a, a, a just an exuberant, such a, a breaking forth of praise? Because God is revealing to you and I what he's had planned from the foundation of the world and what would do as a benefit and a blessing for you and I. Why isn't the church more excited? Why isn't the church more joyful? Why, why is the church not rejoicing? Because maybe they haven't got a true revelation of who Jesus is. He's more than a baby in a manger. Right? The world's celebrating this baby, but there's something deeper. There's something greater. It's more than just a baby. It's God coming into mankind. It's God dwelling with man. It's God. God saw it joyful. In fact, when you continue to read, the angels start rejoicing. He tells the shepherds rejoice. Everybody rejoice because now I've come in to save man. <laughs> I've come in to save you when you couldn't save yourself. How many know that you didn't save yourself? How many know that it was only God that saved you? See, you're not in this seat sitting there by choice. You didn't choose just to be here. You didn't settle in your mind two, three, or whatever years you got saved that I'm going to just go in the faith world and I'm just going to give my no. It was God's choosing. It was God who had his hand, who had his finger on you. Is anybody in this room with me? What a revelation, Goody. What a, 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 a revealing agenda. I mean, if, if we're going to get excited about anything, why not about Jesus? Anybody in this room with me? Maybe I'm preaching by myself, or maybe I'm just speaking to me. See, prophecy is nothing to make light of. Listen to me. This verse here is a big deal. That is Isaiah 7, 14. But unfortunately, it has lost its impact by all of the holiday jingle, and eventually it just becomes nothing more than an annual Christmas celebration. However, the king has been revealed to us. I'm going to say that again. The king, I said the king, I said the king has been revealed to us. Jesus has been revealed to us. Not only has he been revealed to us, he's been revealed in us and through us. Right? Isn't it about him that you even here sitting here today? Isn't it about him that's keeping you that has you seated still and your desire is to come into the church. Your desire is to be part of a, 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 an organism, a life, a church, that something's happening. It, it's, he's put in you that desire. See, the message is about having a revelation about who Jesus is to us and what he has come to do for us. See, as we set up, or as I set this platform this morning. I want to consider John and what he said in 14 verse 6, John 14, 6, it says like this, Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. 
Look what he says. No one comes to the Father except they come through me. Right? In other words, there are two elements. Listen to this. To consider in this verse. First, it says that, that there is a way and that there is a destination. There is a way and that there is a destination. There is a way and there is a destination. Jesus is the way and God the Father is the destination. But there are many believers, listen to this, that have considered Jesus as the way but are not considering the destination. I said believers. In other words, what am I saying? Many have sought Jesus as a way out of their pain. Many have sought Jesus out of their misery and out of their poverty. Many, many have Jesus as a way to success. What does all of this have in common? It is all tangible, listen to me, and here on earth. It just has everything to do with here on earth. In other words, they are looking for a way to just feel better. They're not really concerned about living for God and reaching the destination, which is eternal life. They just want Jesus to make them feel better right now. And because they have this mindset that Jesus make me feel better, if he doesn't make you feel better, then he doesn't get your praise. If he doesn't show up when you want him to show up, because all you're here to do is just to get from him, but never give to him. Is anybody in this room with me? Well, Lord, give me. Lord, give me a healing. Lord, give me this and give me that. It's only to escape their misery and their pain. And yes, Jesus does deliver us. And Jesus does remove pain. And Jesus does do the things that we ask. But at the same time, we need to keep in mind, what if he doesn't do it? What if, what if he never shows up? Does he still deserve praise? What if, he, what if he never heals your body? Can you still give him praise? If you can't, then you've not received revelation of him yet. Your joy doesn't come by what he does. Your joy comes from who he is. My joy comes from what? From understanding who he is to me. Not what he does. He's already done what he needed to do. It's a matter of me now understanding who you are. You are everything. You are my creator. You are my sustainer. You are my helper. You are my deliverer. You are my rescue. You're my salvation. You're my eternal life. You're everything to me. You ain't got to do anymore. You've done it all, but I'm going to give you praise anyway. Anybody in this room with me today? Are you getting it? You don't, you don't get out of your bed just to get here, as I said last week, and just say, well, let me just see what God going to do for me today. Let me hear what pastor's going to say. And if I don't like what he says, then I just disregard it. If God don't heal me in my body, then you know what? He ain't going to get no praise from me. I'm just going to watch everybody else pray, but I ain't giving him nothing. Anybody in this room with me? But see, I must remind you, the king has been revealed. The king has been revealed. There's, there was a gender reveal some 2,000 years ago, and it was from God. And God was eager to let everyone, everyone know. Yes, everyone know. Listen to this. Many will know Jesus and will in fact experience the blessing that comes from knowing him. I don't deny that. Will he heal you? Yeah. Will he bless you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah. Will he, will he save you, save your family? Mm-hmm. But, real, but never really understand why Jesus really came. Can I, can I tell you why he came? Jesus came to bring us into relationship with the Father. And yes, I agree that he came to save that which was lost. He came to uh, 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 
die on the cross so that you and I can live. I, I get that. I got it. But ultimately, he came to bring us back into relationship with the Father. What a gender reveal. I like what John 1, John chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Look at this verse as he put this up here. Look at this verse. Here, 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 here is, uh, 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 for me, it sums it up. John chapter 12. I'm sorry, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Say this with me. Say, Jesus came to bring me back in relationship with the Father. How many know we were out of relationship because of Adam? Because of Adam, the first man sinned. And from that point on, sin passed on to all men. And from that point, all men have been separated from God. Jesus came to do what? Bring us back into relationship. Look what it says. Even in his own land and among his own people, the Jews, he was not accepted. Only a few would welcome and receive him. Hmm. But to all who received him, look at this. He gave the right to become what? Children of God. All they needed to do was to trust that he saved them. So he brings us back into relationship, what? With the Father. That's why Jesus came. He had to seek and save the law. But more than that, to bring us back in right. That's why you in this room, if you're not walking with him, you can't, you can't afford to not give your heart and give your life to Jesus because Jesus loves you so much. That God had a gender reveal, and it was to reveal to you the Father's love. Right? To reveal the Father's love. The Father loves you. Let me say that again. The Father loves you. God the Father loves you. And he showed it through his son, Jesus Christ. How God loved the world. We know that scripture, John 3, 16. That what did he do? He gave his only begotten. But listen to it. It doesn't say how God, how angry God was, how mad, because he could have because the world was in a mess. It doesn't say for God was angry that he gave his son. God was mad. No, for God so loved the world. Isn't that what Christmas should be about? Understanding as we celebrate, as we come into with our families, that this is about love that God displayed 2,000, he loved me so much that he was, he was not willing to keep it to himself. He had to share it. He had to what? He had to share it. God sharing his love, his, his provision. God sharing himself. That's what it was. God revealing. God showing it. And he did it into a, in a, into a, in a, in a way where we can all relate. He did it through a man. <laughs> Through a man, Jesus, through a man, right? What an amazing God you and I serve. First John, first John, write this scripture down. First John three and one. First John three. Tell the person next to you, you are loved. You are loved. I want to, I want to get this today. I want, I want to get this. Look what it says. See how very much our Heavenly Father loves us. Have you ever read that scripture before? Yeah? It's revealing. This is, this, is, this, is, this is something you need to know. God's not angry at you. God's not mad at you. God loves you. Ooh. Hallelujah. When he sent Jesus, I need you to get in the mindset that gender reveal. He wasn't just sending a baby. Amen. I'm going to say that again because we get caught up on a baby. I love babies. I got babies and every babies and babies. But it wasn't just the baby. It was what the baby was coming on assignment for. I feel like preaching it here, Pastor Pablo. And so in my spirit, I've got joy. In me, i got peace. In me, there's a, there's a love. In me, there's a, a satisfaction. In me, there's a content knowing that what I'm celebrating is bigger than a baby. 
What I'm, what I'm celebrating, what I'm rejoicing in, when I praise God from where I'm, I'm not looking at the mindset of a baby. I'm not caught up in the day or that day, 25th of December, Christmas. I'm caught up in what he was sent to do. And that was to bring me back into relationship with my papa. I'm in relationship with my papa. There's no fear, no anxieties, no insecurities, no worry. Isn't that what Christmas should be about? Instead of us buying all the gifts, instead of us getting crazy over the gifts and all this stuff. Nothing wrong with you buying your gift. I ain't got nothing wrong with you wrapping your paper. I ain't got nothing wrong with you setting up your tree. You can do what you want to do. But I'm going to tell you something. It's something greater and bigger than a tree. There's something greater and bigger than your gift. There's something greater and bigger than anything that you've ever seen before. And his name is Jesus. Anybody in this room with me? Oh, the revelation of the Father, his love that he displays. Look what it says. For he loves us. And look at this. For he allows us to be called children. You couldn't even be a child of God if God not initiated. I mean, how, we, how, how crazy we get, Goody, at times. That when things don't get right, we get mad and, and you forget that it was God that allowed you to be here anyway. It was God that allowed you to be part of the kingdom. If, if God had no thought of you, you wouldn't be here today. Is anybody in this room with me? Oh, I know that you've faced things. I know that things happen, but it does not take away the Father's love for you. I know that things don't always work out, and you wish it would have worked out better, and you wish it should have it should have happened in a better way, but it doesn't take away from you that God's love is still toward you. I'm loved. I'm loved. I'm going to say that again. I'm loved. The Father allows it. The Father, the Father. Look at it. It says, think of it. And we really are. But since most people don't know God, naturally they don't understand that we are his children. In other words, you really haven't gotten a revelation of the king. Because when you get a revelation of the king, you no longer walk around like a slave. You walk around like a child. You're not begging, you're thinking. When you're a child, when you're a child, my, my granddaughter will walk in my room. I say, listen, girl, you got to knock sometime. <laughs> but when she understands that she's a child in the line of the family, you don't have to knock. You come on in. God invites you in because his love invited you in 2,000 years ago. When that reveal went play, it was saying, I'm coming down so you can come in. Are you in this room with me? Come on. Come on. I love that. But since most people don't know God, or in other words, they haven't got a revelation of God. How do we get a revelation of God? Through Jesus. Jesus points us to the Father. Jesus gives me a portrait of what the Father looks like. Did you hear me? If I ever wanted to see what God looked like, all I had to do is look at Jesus. He's a loving God. He's not, after, he's not for me to be destroyed. He's not, he's not, he's not, he's not uh, hoping or th uh, thinking things against me in a bad way. No, the Father loves me. The Father is concerned about everything that concerns me. How many believe that? Right? First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your cares upon me because I, I care for you. If you look up that word in the Greek, the word casting means to throw upon your cares. In other words, you have no reason holding it in. You have no reason carrying it yourself. Throw your cares or your concerns or the things that bother you. God says, throw it unto me. Casting all your cares upon me because I'm concerned about what's going on in your life. Right now, at this moment, I'm concerned about everything you're up against, everything you're fit. I'm concerned. If you will learn to cast it, I think in Proverbs it talks about committing thy way unto the Lord. Committing thy, thy way unto the Lord. 
I think Proverbs, another chapter three, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he will what? Direct your, he will direct your path. So God is made known. God is revealed. Here, here's, the, here's the thing, guys. There's no reason we need to be walking contrary or, uh, or uh, against what God has already said and done. Just him revealing himself makes us known that he's for us. Paul says in Romans, if God be for us, who can be what? Here's the next scripture. If God, who did not even spare his own, his own what? Son, not baby, son. <laughs> Sons always come with an assignment. Now, I'm, that doesn't take out the women. This is a general term, but I'm prophesying. Sons come with an assignment. Ooh. Yeah, you listen to me. Listen to me. Sons come with an assignment. Did you catch it yet? That's why the revealing. Some, some of you have been facing things, and God said, I'm just trying to get you in a place so that I can reveal who I am in you. See, this is bigger than just a baby born on 25th of December. There's a, there's a revealing of the Father. Ooh, I feel that. I'm not talking about, gee, he's already real. How about you? <laughs> you that's been sitting in this room and, and you that's been walking with him, have, have you allowed him to bring you? Have you allowed him to open up the door and bring you to where he wants to bring you? Is anybody in this room with me? That, there's a revealing that, that God's sons come with revelation. There's a reason why you're a child. There's a reason why you're a daughter. Because somebody has to see God. And I would think if we understand this, how come more people aren't being saved? Why isn't more people coming into the kingdom? Why isn't more people really experiencing God the way you experience it? I mean, if you really get this understanding of what Jesus did and who you are, you wouldn't be holding back telling other folks about this God you serve. Right? Are you in this room with me? Come on, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. it, it this is the thing that I'm trying to get us to understand. Amen. Some sons come with revelation. They come, they come, their, their purpose, they're to, re, they're to be revealed. Not just sit in a room with four walls and say, feed me and never give nothing away. The enemy is slick because the devil knows the potential and what God has on us and what God wants to do with us. The enemy fights us and what the enemy more so will do is try to uh, create, create havoc among us. And if he divides us, we become weak. Because the mindset of why we're gathered here is a family. If I'm a child of God and you're a child of God, that makes us a family. Anybody in this room with me? I'm, I'm going to say that again. If I'm a child of God and Juan is a child of God, in fact, let me just go. If the church down the street is a child of God, that's my family. That's my family. Now, how many know that things don't always work out right in family? We have disagreements. You know, we fight. We get mad at one another. I didn't like what you did. But ultimately, we come back together and we act like We act like family. Isn't that what his love should be producing? Yeah, that in, his love should be producing, producing this type of, this type of uh, 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 family because that's, this is what he's saying. And the only reason why I'm not acting like family is because maybe I've not received a clear revelation of who he is. All right? But the good news is that can change. We, don't, we won't always be blinded to that. Romans 5.10 says, For if when we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. Now, 
See, I want you to understand the destination is not a, is not a feeling. It is a fact that we will only reach, only reach by faith. If you, in fact, have a revelation about who Christ is and what he has come to do, then it is our kingdom responsibility to get the message out to others. Verse 32 in that chapter 1 says, He will be great and he will be called the son of the highest. I'm going to quickly give you three elements of Christ's work when he came into the earth, threefold activity of Jesus. And all of this benefits us. Number one, Jesus as a prophet. As a prophet. Listen to this. As a prophet, Jesus declares an end to all our sin. Good news. Good news. Now in the Old Testament, the prophet was the mouthpiece of God to the people. In fact, the prophet often used words that said, thus said the Lord. As God's mouthpiece, listen to me, the prophet spoke the words of indictment against the people for their sin, which you will find in Isaiah chapter 1 verse 4. And also called them to repentance. The prophet pronounced the forgiveness and pardon of God, which is Isaiah in Isaiah 40 verse 1 and 2. Jesus, Jesus. We didn't know of all that was being revealed. Today we know Jesus as the final and sufficient prophet has done all these things for us. He came not just proclaiming the word of God. He is the word of God. He came to the world because of sin. He proclaimed our need to repent and believe on him. And he proclaimed our pardon and forgiveness of sin Jesus as a prophet number two Jesus as a priest as a priest in that gender reveal not only was he revealed as a prophet he was revealed as a priest as a priest Jesus offered himself as the sacrifice for all our sin that's good news that's good news in the old testament listen to this the high priest was the mediator between the holy God and his sinful people. As mediator, the high priest entered the holy place and offered a sacrifice to God on behalf of the people once a year on the day of atonement. Christ, listen to me, as our mediator and high priest, not only offered the sacrifice once and for all, but he was the sacrifice. Isn't that a picture of how much God loves you? That he was willing to die on a cross. He became the sacrifice. He became, say that with me, he became the sacrifice. Now here's the crazy thing. He didn't deserve the cross. He didn't do anything to, to, get, to be on the cross. You know who deserved to be on that cross? We did. You did. You did. Yet he says, uh-uh, let me step in the play. Here's that ginger reveal. God coming into the earth. <laughs> God, God revealing, I'm going to come in on your behalf. You go ahead. I'm going to step in. I'm going to become not only a prophet and tell you what's wrong, but I'm going to tell you I'm going to be the one to pay the price for you. Is anybody in this room with me? You, you see why he deserves worship? You see why he deserves praise? If he ain't did anything else, just enough to step in on my behalf was good enough for me. Just because he was willing to go and die for me, a sinner, wretched, no good, evil, wicked, God would die for me. Now, some of y'all may have gotten it all together. Maybe you are right. But I know where I can. I know the kind of man I was. I know the things that I dealt with. And to know that somebody was willing to take my place. Oh, you deserve the praise today. You deserve the glory. You deserve all. Oh, I bless you just because of who you are. <laughs> anybody in this room with me? I said anybody in this room with me? Maybe you had it all together, but I'm letting you know I didn't have it all together. I was a mess. And to know, why would you do this for me? Why would you come and take my place? Unless you came 
on a mission from the Father who said, I don't want any of my children to perish. I'm willing to come in, take on flesh. God steps into flesh, gets pushed out of a virgin and becomes man and walk in the world like man. And he understands our frailties. And he says, not only have I come, but I'm willing to lay my life down. You know, John talks about, uh, uh, Jesus says, I call you friends. I call you what? I mean, when you think about it, I'm thinking like, but I wasn't your friend. How can you be my friend and I've never befriended you? Why would you as a friend lay your life down and I didn't consider you for I didn't even want you. I didn't even want to serve you. I didn't want nothing to do with you. But you call me friend. I call you friends. So much so that I'm willing to lay my life down for a friend. Are you his friend here tonight? Or today? Listen to this. Like the high priest of old, Christ entered that holy place. But unlike the high priest, he entered to offer himself. He had to enter only one time, for he sprinkled his own blood on the mercy seat. You know, I noticed when I was doing a little study in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, that there was one piece of furniture that was not included in the tabernacle. And that was a chair. That was a chair that you notice that the priest would always stay having to walk around. Always have to, uh, uh, he could never sit down. Never be able to take a rest. But I noticed something about Jesus, our high priest. In heaven, he's sitting down. Listen to me. That the priest in the tabernacle could never rest because there was always, you know, the, the killing, just so much stuff going on. So every time someone sinned, there was always a sacrifice, always something had to go on so that the, the sins could be forgiven. But once Jesus did it, say once and for all, the Bible says he did what? He sat down. Our priest, Jesus, is sitting down at the right hand of the Father. You know what he's saying? It's done. I don't have to die no more because I paid the price once and for all. You're going to tell me you can't give him praise when they would have to pull animals in and then the priest would have to have that person lay the hand on that beast and the sin of yours was transferred to that beast and that animal would have to die in your place. Jesus said, I took your place. Your sins were put on me. And guess what? I'm in heaven now. And I'm at the right hand of the Father. Never ever to have to die again. The sacrifice that I've given was good. Remember on the cross, he said what? It, the blood has been shed. Your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been erased. They have no longer power to keep you in bondage. Because I'm sitting down. It's finished. It's done. It's over. You don't need to be crazy, get worried. Uh uh. Everything you needed to be done is done. So, what is he, priest? But he's, I'm sorry, prophet. And we find out he's the priest, the mediator between God and man. He brings us into this amazing relation as this priest. He brings us in. He becomes not only the one who brings us in, but he was willing to lay his life down. Number three, can I give you the last one? He also was revealed as a king. Prophet, priest. And king. Now you see why we don't worship a baby.
but we give praise to the king. Anybody in this room? What was he revealed as? Prophet, priest. Whoa, you'll get, you'll get excited in a moment. See, when we were looking at this baby, God was saying, you missed it. You missed it. There's more to this child, this son, than you're, you're really getting. I know that you're going to be celebrating, but you can't celebrate him from a baby standpoint. You got to celebrate him as a prophet. You got to celebrate him as a, a priest. What a mighty God you serve. And you have to celebrate him as a king. Isn't that what the, the wise men did when they were looking for him? Where is the king of the Jews? They could have easily said, where that baby at that was born? <laughs> right? We saw a star. But somehow they got revelation that he's more than just a baby. That's why prophecy is so important. What would make wise men leave their abode and travel for miles to look for a baby? That would be crazy unless they knew something about that baby. Ooh, there's divine on that baby. There's glory. There's something great on that baby. He's more than just a baby. He comes to be a son. A son who comes and brings deliverance. A son who comes and brings freedom. Who breaks the power of sin over our lives. Sin no longer has dominion over me and you. I only got one person that said amen to that. Could it be why we're still struggling with this sin thing when Jesus says sin's power has been broken, the penalty of sin's been paid for, and the punishment of sin, he took it for himself. Why are we struggling and dealing with sin and giving into it when Jesus said the power of it's been brought? I took the power out of sin. <laughs> Did you hear me? I, Did you hear me? I took the power out of sin. I took the power out the grave. He took the power out of anything that could keep you and I and bind us. Jesus said it no longer can hold you down because I have rescued you. Give the Lord a hand cup of praise, of worship, because that's true. Come on. Come on. My God. As king, let me finish it here. My job is up. As king, Jesus rules in such a way as not to allow sin to reign over us any longer. Few things comfort a nation more than having a ruler of righteousness and strength. Sitting on the throne of power, it was said of David that he reigned over all Israel. And David administered justice and equity to all his people. However, well, we have a king greater than David. We have a king greater than David. Christ came in the line of David and yet also as David's Lord. He is the ruler of kings of the earth and king of kings and lord of lords, including David. He rules with perfect justice and equity as our king. Listen to this. I'm going to finish with this. Jesus has fought our battles and now rules in such a way that sin can never reign over us again. That sin what? Can never. Sin can never rule over you, you, you again. Its power has been broken. When Jesus got up off, out of that tomb, sin's power was broken. Now how do we, how do we get, how do we get to that place where we believe that? You've heard what I said, but it's going to take you now to get in that word and get before God. And if I'm dealing with an issue in my life of sin, if there's sin still having some type of control, it's not that its power has been broken. It's just that I've not got a revelation of what Jesus did. Did you hear me? 
Just because you're dealing with what you're dealing with doesn't mean that sin's powers. Because, Pastor, I can't overcome it. I can't overcome it. That's a lie. You can. You just need a revelation of Jesus. <laughs> you need a revelation of Jesus as the king. How many know king carries authority? How many know that when a king has a scepter in his hand, the scepter gives a right for a person to come in and out, right? How do we, how do we conquer this sin? By getting a revelation of who the king is. My job this, this, uh, this afternoon was to help you get a clear understanding that you really don't have any struggles in your life. I understand there's some things we all are challenged with. I say challenged with, but they are never to meant to overcome you. They were never meant. Not when you have had a gender reveal. Can I, I, you, you, 2,000 years ago, there was a gender reveal, and God was so excited that he had to send Gabriel. <laughs> come on, come on, in right here. God had to, Gabriel, I need you to go now. I need you to get into the earth and tell them who's about to, what's coming into the earth. I'm so excited, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm so excited. Gabriel, go on, boy, go on down there. Go on, angel, do your thing. Because I'm so excited that my people were in bondage. Satan thought he had a hold on my people. And the devil knew God couldn't just, God couldn't just do anything to redeem them. God had to become a man. Because it was a man that gave it away. There needed to be a man that will come and take it back. And God says, I will become a man and I will come. What man didn't do or couldn't do and what Adam lost, I'm now going to do it. And I will redeem my people. Can I tell you something? That's the message of Christmas. That's the message. God becoming man and redeeming and rescuing man. What a mighty God. You serve. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. You can do better than that. You better give him some praise in here. I said, what a mighty God you serve. What a good God. What a faithful God. What a God, a holy God, a righteous God, a great God, a powerful God. He deserves all my glory. He deserves all the praise. There ain't nobody like your God. There ain't nobody like your God. <laughs> nobody like him. Nobody like him. I'm going to bless him. Nobody like him. I don't know what y'all else need to hear today. I mean, you've had a gender reveal. <laughs> what that does for us takes us to that next level. And we say, God, where we're not mature and where we've not grown, grow us. Lord, give, give me revelation. That same revelation that you gave the shepherds that you gave the angels that they were thousands upon thousands in the air singing holy 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 god we want that same revelation lord in a greater way we we've been walking with you but we need more how many will say it anymore lift your hand and say lord i need more i want more i want more i want my my praise my my worship to go that nothing hinders it Ah, come on. Oh, what a mighty God. I need to do something before we go. So, uh, Jeff, just pray something soft. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I don't know I'm like that, but man, what you've been saying is convincing. It's touching me. Pastor, I want to, I want to know Jesus. And you may not know him. You're here and you've done the Christmas deal. And, but man, in your heart, you're saying, I just, I, I thought it was more. I thought, I thought that's what it was about. Him doing for me and then I would give it to him. Him praise. No, no, it's, it's acknowledging who he is. And I want to give someone an opportunity that's in this room. You say you don't know him, but I want, I want you, if you don't know Jesus, to lift your hand. I want to pray with you. 
If you're in this room, you say, Pastor, I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus, but I want to be saved. I'm not here to embarrass you. I'm not going to put you out. I'm just going to tell you what happened to me 20 years, 30 years ago. I gave my heart to him. And I was a mess. I wasn't perfect. I didn't have it all together. But when I gave my heart to him, what he did do is he saved me and he delivered me. He didn't give me money. He didn't give me a car. He didn't give me a big house. Can I tell you what he gave me? Peace. He gave me, he gave me eternal life. I got peace now. See, we think we need money to have peace. No, peace comes from the peace from Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace. If you're in this room, I'm not going to keep you long, but I do want to give someone an opportunity and say, Pastor, would you pray with me? If you're in this room, you're not saved, lift your hand. I want to pray with you. Don't leave here without giving your heart to Jesus. Don't walk out of this room without giving your heart to Jesus.